Well, first of all, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, our guest will be the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Investments, Regional Deve Development and Informatization of the Slovak Republic, Veronika Remesova, along with the President of the UN Habitat Assembly, Martha Delgado, and UN Habitat Executive Director, M Mamuna Mohamed Sharif. They will join us uh, in the room shortly to discuss the uh, today's General Assembly high-level meeting on the implementation of the new urban agenda. The, the Secretary General met in the past hours in Kiev with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky and Foreign Minister Dmitry Klebra. He will soon be doing a press encounter in Kiev. It hasn't started yet. That's another reason why I was late. Uh, They they have met. I don't I don't frankly know at this stage whether the meeting's over, but uh, they should. Uh, they're expected to be going into a press uh, uh, encounter uh, very very soon. And once that happens, uh, uh, we'll try to get it transcribed and available to you as soon as we can this afternoon. Earlier, the secretary general visited the town of Borodyanka and expressed his sadness upon seeing the destroyed buildings there. He added that the war is an absurdity in the 21st century. The war is evil. And when one sees these situations, our heart, of course, stays with the victims. He then visited the St. Andrew's Church in Bucha. And he said after seeing the massacre site there that it's important to have a thorough investigation and accountability. He expressed his support for the work of the International Criminal Court and appealed to the Russian Federation to cooperate with that court. And he also visited the destroyed Irpinsky Lipki residential complex in the town of Irpin and said that innocent civilians have been living in these buildings. Wherever there's war, he said, the highest price is paid by civilians. The Special Envoy for Yemen, Hans Grunberg, welcomes Ansar Allah's release of the 12 detained foreign nationals from Ethiopia, India, Indonesia, the Philippines, Myanmar, and the United Kingdom. He thanks Oman and Saudi Arabia for their efforts in that regard. He encourages the parties to, to continue their engagement with the Office of the Special Envoy to release all prisoners. In South Sudan, UN peacekeepers there recently wrapped up a fact-finding mission to the area of Magui in eastern Equatoria as part of efforts to lower tensions between farmers and cattle herders over a lack of resources. Since February, skirmishes have led to the deaths and injury to dozens of civilians, as well as sexual violence and the displacement of some 20,000 people. The UN mission, UN agencies, and the government have brought to the feuding groups together for reconciliation and peace talks and to discuss how to improve basic services. The UN mission will also help promote further talks between the local security forces and communities to reduce tensions and restore stability in the area. And in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the UN peacekeeping mission has carried out a joint operation with the country's armed forces to protect civilians and also to dislodge the Kodeko armed group from the area of Sake, which is in the province of Ituri. As we have reported, people in this area of the DRC have faced attacks by this group in recent weeks. Our colleagues say that this joint operation has improved security in the area and has allowed communities to resume their daily activities. In the Central African Republic, the UN peacekeeping mission in the country has an update on its support ahead of the next local elections, which are anticipated to take place next year. So far this month, the mission has conducted 272 training sessions on civic education, and they've reached more than 23,000 people. Almost half of the participants were women. The UN mission and its partners, including the UN Development Program, are helping the National Elections Authority to identify premises for the storage of electoral material. They're also finalizing the recruitment of cartographers and preparing training for them. The mission is focused on providing support to ensure conditions are in place to enable peaceful local elections, given their vital importance to expand political space in the country and to advance the implementation of the peace process. The last time local elections took place in the country was in 1988, 34 years ago. The UN Refugee Agency is telling us that a new declaration calling for more concerted action to help the nearly 1.4 million displaced Central Africans was signed yesterday. The Yaoundé Declaration, signed at the end of a ministerial conference organized by the government of Cameroon and UNHCR, marks the first step towards the establishment of a regional coordination mechanism to find solutions to one of Africa's largest displacement crises. Since 2013, the Central African Republic has experienced successive crises impacting six neighboring countries that today host around 700,000 refugees. Cameroon has the largest number of refugees, 345,000, 
followed by the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Chad, the Republic of Congo, Sudan, and South Sudan. On the Philippines, we have an update on the humanitarian response to Typhoon Rai, which made landfall on the southern islands of the country in December. Our humanitarian colleagues say that 12,000 people remain displaced. To date, the Humanitarian Needs and Priorities Plan, which called for $169 million, is only 33.5% funded, with only $56.6 million received by the UN and our partners. These funds have gone towards thousands of projects in the areas of food, shelter, water, and protection, among other areas. Tropical Storm Megi also struck earlier this month across many of the same areas affected by Typhoon Rai. Aid agencies are coordinating the response with the government and partners. In Haiti, our colleagues from the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs are telling us that violent clashes between gangs in the capital have prompted the displacement of several hundred people. They say the pro that preliminary information indicates that at least 20 civilians, including children, were killed and several houses have been looted and burned. Businesses and schools in the affected area are closed. A coordination committee has been set up under the leadership of Haiti's Civil Protection Directorate and with the participation of UN agencies and NGO partners. Yesterday and today, a team from the Coordination Committee, including the UN, traveled to the impacted areas and met officials of the municipality of Tabar, as well as displaced people. Key humanitarian needs identified so far are food, emergency health care, shelter, and protection. Our colleagues from IOM have a hotline for immediate psychosocial assistance and referral to appropriate institutions. Moving to Colombia, our humanitarian colleagues report that following the starts of the rainy season, rising water levels have led to flooding of large parts of land and villages in Cordoba, Bolivar, Sucre, and Antioquia municipalities in the northwest. The new flooding is affecting the recovery of almost 156,000 persons affected by similar flooding eight months ago. Humanitarian actors have started to establish a rapid response strategy to respond to needs and strengthen the capacity of communities to recover their livelihoods and productive activities at an early stage. And our peacekeeping colleagues tell us that Cambodia has received funding from the ELSI Initiative Fund to identify barriers to the deployment of uniformed women to UN peace operations. Cambodia plans to increase its deployment of military women to United Nations peacekeeping to 20% by 2024. It's currently the 25th highest troop contributing country to the United Nations peacekeeping currently deploying 766 military personnel, among which 14% are women. The project will be managed by UN Women Cambodia. More information is available online. And we have an update from our team in Palestine, led by the resident coordinator, humanitarian coordinator, and deputy special coordinator, Lynn Hastings, continues uh, uh, about their support uh, for the government's vaccination campaign against uh, COVID-19. Uh, we have helped with the logistics for several rounds of vaccine shipments to Palestine through COVAX. To date, COVAX has sent nearly 1.9 million doses to Palestine to be distributed to 20% of the population in the West Bank and in Gaza. Yesterday, the UN team dispatched nearly 300,000 doses, allocating more than 179,000 to the West Bank and more than 120,000 to the Gaza Strip. We have helped to fully vaccinate more than 1.7 million people over the age of 12, which is just over half the targeted population. More than 2 million people have received at least one dose through UN-backed efforts. And uh, today is the International uh, Girls in ICT Day. This year's theme is access and safety, and it highlights the importance of providing girls and young women with safe and reliable access to the internet and digital tools so that they thrive in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics careers. It is also the World Day for Safety and Health at Work, and the start of the International Year of Sustainable Mountain Development. And we have two more payments to the regular budget. Today, these come from our friends in Benin in Egypt, and we thank them very much. The total number of fully paid member states is now 93, with just 100 more to go. And that's it for me. Any questions? Yes, if the sum. I have two questions. First, a follow-up on... The statement you read about uh, vaccination uh, in the Equipe uh, West Bank and Gaza, uh, uh, did I get you right that about 20% of the population there is now vaccinated or? Um, hold on. I, no, the, the doses are to be distributed to 20% of the population. 
uh, we have helped to fully vaccinate more than 1.7 million people over the age of 12 in, in the occupied Palestinian territory, which is just over half the targeted population. So it's, so it's about 50 percent. And uh, but uh, but yes, uh, the, the figure of um, the figure of 20 percent that uh, that I that I had read out earlier. Uh, was uh, was uh, the group that will be getting um, that that got the Covax doses that were sent uh, you know, that were sent uh, out uh, the 1.9 million doses that were sent out. I have a follow up on that because um, the um, Palestinian territories, uh, West Bank and Gaza, are under occupation, and the occupation power should actually uh, is w w responsible also for uh, the. Um, uh, health uh, and infrastructure in the occupation territories. So my question, and as we know, Israel is one of the leading countries uh, when it comes to vaccination and vaccine and vaccinating their own population. So did the UN also ask the Israeli authorities as the occupying power to vaccinate the Palestinians in the occupied Palestinian territory? Well, what I can say on that is that we have uh, had cooperation uh, from Israel in terms of uh, being able to to get the vaccines in uh, to the population. So, so, so we so we worked with them as part of the process of getting the Covax-backed vaccines in. But not that they vaccinate. Uh, you'd have to check with the government of Israel about uh, about how they're handling that. But we we did uh, get their cooperation in terms of getting Covax vaccines in. I have a. Question uh, on Libya. If. Uh, okay, and then and then we'll go around. Okay, yes. so uh, the question is: uh, Did the Secretary General present any names to the Security Council uh, regarding uh, an envoy? Uh, well, at this stage, like I said uh, uh, yesterday, uh, the work uh, uh, that we need to have done in Libya is continuing to be done by the special advisor to the Secretary General, Stephanie Williams, and uh, whenever there's any change, we'll we'll let you know about that. Yes, James. You didn't. Uh, I just want to pick up on that question. You didn't quite answer the question. Has a name been given to the Security Council? The reason we're asking is because our understanding is a permanent member of the Security Council does not want to endorse the new mandate of the mission until it knows the name of the envoy. So it is a very relevant question given the time frame of Unsmil is running out in a matter of just hours now. Uh, what I can say is that you know, we're in discussion with the member states, including the member states of the Security Council. I don't have any announcements to make at this point. Okay. My actual yep. question then is, is on Ukraine. First um, clarification, was that in the end, was the meeting with Kaleba and Zelensky uh, and the SG all together? Because if I remember rightly, it was going to be a meeting with the foreign minister, then with the president. It all happened in one yep. go, did it? Uh, it's hard for me to get the details because, uh, alas, uh, our colleagues um, uh, who are in on these meetings do not have access to their phones. Uh, so it'll take a while to, to, to be cl completely clear. It seems as if it was a group meeting. One thing I do know is that since this noon briefing has started, uh, I've been informed that uh, the press conference in Kiev has just begun. It, so it began about an hour late from what we had anticipated, but, but it's, uh, it's underway now. And so can you tell us any more about Mariupol, the operation that you explained yesterday, you were bringing in UN staff, ICR st staff, specialists from around the world. You weren't quite sure who was where. You weren't quite sure of which of the coordinators the UN had was had been put in charge of this. Can you now, 24 hours on, give us a little bit more detail on how that operation is going, whether you have all the relevant uh, permissions from the Ukrainian authorities, from the Russian Federation, and where we are right now? Well, first off, I'll have to be a, a, a little bit... Um vague on some of the details precisely because of the delicacy of the negotiations. Uh, I want to ensure that our colleagues have uh, uh, the ability to carry out this operation. And so, 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 so as part of that, uh, I won't be able to, to provide uh, the kind of detailed information you might be seeking. On, uh, on our side, uh, we have uh, people involved in coordinating with uh, the, the re relevant officials in Ukraine and uh, and uh, the International Committee of the Red Cross uh, on the Ukrainian side, and those officials are our humanitarian coordinator Osnat Lubrani, and our crisis communicator Amina Wad. Mm -hmm. We also have senior officials of the Office of for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs involved in Moscow dealing with uh, the Ministry of Defense uh, side. So so 
there are discussions being held in a variety of locations. Uh, what those concern, I won't be able to tell you, though. Uh, yes, Edie. Um, I had a similar question to James, but will now ask the follow-up. Uh, following these Secretary General's meeting with uh, President Zelensky and Foreign Minister Kuleba, um, yes, he's having a press encounter, but can we get some kind of an update specifically on um, what their talks uh, resulted in on the Mariupol issue of the evacuation? Uh, the Secretary General uh, has uh, just given out uh, some uh, remarks uh, to the press. Uh, our colleague Stefan uh, Dujric will provide those as, as soon as, uh, as he is able to. Uh, I believe that his remarks do touch upon the discussions concerning Mariupol and, and will, uh, and so whatever he says from there is, is the information we'll be able to provide to you on that. Well, anything else that you can get to elaborate on to answer the questions that we've asked here? I suspect for today the answer will be no. I would, I would much rather be silent and allow people to reach safety successfully than to say anything that could uh, impede this one way or the other. Uh, Philippe. Thank you, Farhan. Uh, going back to the question of Ibtissam on Stephanie Williams, because your answer was not clear for me. Uh, her contract and at the end of this week does that mean that she, had, she got a renewal for one month, two months, three months, as the mission should be um, renewed for three months too? Uh, well, first, uh, we, we, will, we will see uh, what the discussions are in, in terms of the renewal of uh, the special mission in Libya. Uh, so, so we want uh, to make sure that uh, the UNSMIL mission is able to go uh, about its work. Uh, and of course, if the if the mission is extended, we we would expect uh, uh, that her work would also uh, uh, continue onwards uh, at the same point. If and when we have an, any further appointments to mention, we'll let you know at that point. But I don't have those. Okay, so ready. It's, it means that uh, she would be if the mandate is renewed tomorrow morning for three months, she got an extension of her contract for three months. No, I, I, I don't want to speculate about, about what, how long her contract will be. Right now, our focus is on making sure that uh, the mission in Libya is extended. Uh, if, if that is to take place, uh, uh, we would expect her to continue doing work in the short term um, uh, until, uh, until there's any time to announce a change. Uh, Pam? Uh, thank you, Farhan. Uh, to follow up to what we've all been asking about the trip, about the SG in Ukraine and, and in Moscow. <clears throat> Apart from today's press conference, after the Secretary General said that the ICRC and the UN would be allowed to, or there was an agreement in principle with Putin, President Putin, to allow them to be present during the evacuation, the Kremlin spokesperson, um, Peskov, said, that um, he didn't understand that there was that understanding. Have you clarified that at all since that was actually yesterday? Well, our officials in a number of places, including in Russia, are continuing to follow up on the agreement that was reached in principle. And we're trying to have the details ironed out. And as uh, far as you know, there was an agreement reached in principle. Uh, you, you saw I what mean, we had to say uh, okay. in our readout, and we stand by what we said. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Benno. Uh, sorry if I missed something, but um, can you tell me what the next steps, uh, next travel uh, steps are for the Secretary General, and how will he spend his birthday on Saturday? Uh, he will spend his birthday on Saturday not actually working for, for that one day. Uh, where that will be kind of depends on travel plans, but I don't have, um, uh, but I don't have any um, uh, uh, travel to announce just yet. I do expect by tomorrow we will announce uh, travel that involves uh, a series of West African countries. As, as you recall, 
the Secretary General a few weeks ago said that he was trying to resume uh, the tradition that he had had of visiting uh, different Muslim countries for, for, uh, during, during Ramzan. And uh, because of these circumstances, uh, that trip was uh, delayed by a few days, but, uh, but he should be visiting a few countries next week, and we will provide the details of that uh, tomorrow. Uh, Stefano. Thank you, Farhan. It's a follow-up on uh, Libya. Um, can you tell us if um, any country in the Security Council um, asked to Secretary General to drop the name of Williams in, uh, for the renewal of Unsmail in the sense that they were not uh, um, going to vote if uh, uh, Williams is, is uh, still the special uh, advisor? Uh, I'm not aware of that, no. Uh, so you, I'm sorry, you, you are not aware or, or didn't? I, I'm not aware. Okay, uh, Linda. Thank you, Farhan. I have a question, <clears throat> excuse me, regarding the, you know, articulation of the idea that one of the goals seems to be to um, help to weaken Russia, so to speak, during, during this war. And I was wondering, I may have missed it, if the Secretary General has at all you know, re reacted to that uh, concept, and if um, he thinks perhaps it might impact his negotiations. I, I don't think we'd speculate on that s sort of analysis. What is very clear is that there is a war happening in Ukraine, and what we want is for that war to end. Uh, Oscar Bolaños. Yes, thank you for having me. I have two questions in Ukraine and one in Haiti uh, regarding the uh, COVID-19. And my first question in Ukraine is, do you have any information about why is the situation with the civilians were forced to move to the Russian territory? What is the situation of these civilians? And my second question is, uh, um, and regarding the remarks during the visit to Ukraine by the uh, Secretary General on the situation that is, is very dire uh, in, in Ukraine. So he says that civilians always pay the highest price and not to forget that the worst of crime is worse itself. And he says that there is no way that a war can be acceptable in the 21st century. So in this regards, with UN Foundation three quarter of century ago to maintain peace and security in the world, does the Secretary General see that those challenges the UN is facing with the war in Ukraine creates a need of a UN reform? And my question in in Haiti about COVID-19, uh, after two years, uh, Haiti is still just on 1.1% of the receiving vaccines. So why the most vulnerable countries still in need of these vaccines? Uh, on the question on Haiti, we're trying, including through uh, our COVAX facility, to get vaccines to all the countries that need it. And we've been encouraging that for, for all of them, including uh, to Haiti. Uh, regarding uh, your question about uh, the reform of the United Nations, the Secretary General, in talking about uh, the lessons uh, from this conflict, has talked about the need for an effective uh, multilateralism. So he is hoping that the nations of the world understand the, that there is a need to always use multilateral organizations and multilateral approaches to dealing with crises. Uh, and, and we hope that, the, the, that after this uh, conflict, we will see again uh, efforts to strengthen respect for the UN Charter and for its principles. Uh, and, and regarding your first question about the movement of people, we've called uh, uh, for, for all sides to make sure that no one is moved against their will uh, following our basic principles uh, that, uh, that any movements of populations have to be with their consent. And we're following up with our organizations on the ground. Uh, Abdel Hamid. Yes, well, my, my uh, question, yes, uh, I'm sorry for him to follow up is my question on the forced to move of the civilians to the Russian territory is what is the situation? Is there any information? Because we haven't heard anything about where they are. What is their situation? 
what what happened with that and what is the data of how many of civilians has been uh, forced to move uh, we are following up uh, with through our colleagues on the ground and we're trying to get uh, any information to back up any reports of any such movements abdul hamid thank you uh, thank you farhan <clears throat> Mr. Winsland, in his uh, briefing to the Security Council on Monday, he mentioned that Israel respects the status quo of Al-Haram al-Sharif and Al-Aqsa Mosque. That statement alone triggered many statements against what he said. I mean, the most important statement came out from the Islamic Christian Commission for the support of Jerusalem. It, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm aware of the discussions that took place on Monday. Uh, give, given uh, that, that I do have guests waiting, uh, uh, what is the question part of your question? The question, was he fair in saying that Israel is respecting the status quo when they allow the settlers to come in day in and day out to the Al-Aqsa Mosque? How could he say that Israel is respecting the status quo? This is my question. We stand by the statement made by the special coordinator. Pam. Uh, just another question. On um, schedule, there is there uh, there was listed a meeting with the Ukrainian prime minister after this press availability. Is that correct? Uh, I He's got another I'm, meeting. I'm not I'm not aware of any further meetings. We'll we'll try to see from from more. Stefan oh. whether there's any additional thing. I do I do believe that uh, this is the this meeting should be at the end of his series of meetings. But uh, but what do you mean the press conference? Uh, he, the he's, press. He's, doing, he's doing a press encounter right now. And then he has one more. This is what Steph said. But uh, I, I yeah, I, I don't know whether that's still happening or not. Okay. We'll we'll check with Stefan All right, and afterwards. Then you just on it, it may up, happen. Right now know, they're in the press conference. We know Saturday for his birthday where it'll be, but Friday is just travel, no no meetings. Uh, Friday, I believe they'll be traveling out of uh, of Kiev and going back uh, uh, to Poland, which is a fairly lengthy travel. And is there any possibility, as we had originally asked here, you thought might be that Yes, she would beam into us at some point, or it wouldn't be till after. I, I I don't Tuesday. think uh, I don't think he'll be uh, talking to you until he's back here in New Tuesday York. Tuesday, at best. No, it'll it'll be later than Tuesday. I, okay. I expect him back okay. in New York on Thursday. One last question, okay, then let's go to you. our guests. Okay, Farhan, I have uh, just a quick follow up on uh, what uh, Philip asked you about uh, Miss Williams. So um, I don't understand why you link the. Her, the renewal of her office or of her, her mandate to the renewal of the um, because no, because it, no, she no, could the, be in her. I'm not linking those two topics right now. Uh, what I'm saying is our priority is the renewal of the mission, and uh, at this stage, we'll see. Uh, hopefully, in the next uh, in the next days, uh, that uh, that the mission can be renewed. You know, w if the mission is renewed at that point, uh, the question is who is the person. Uh, doing uh, doing uh, some of the the key tasks involved in in uh, the mission's work. Uh, right now, as you know, in recent weeks, it's been Stephanie Williams. It will continue be, to be that until I have a change to announce. Farhan, a very quick follow up. Yes. Um, when are you going to be announcing the Secretary General's uh, travels next week in West Africa? Because some of them have been announced in the region. Uh, uh, I, I am expecting that tomorrow. All right, now we'll turn to our guests. One second.